So in the previous sessions, we have uh, discussed about the uh, magnetic field due to circular and current carrying conductor. And to derive the equation, uh, we have used uh, bios So that is uh, that's why we all know about uh, bios So using that law, what we can do is uh, uh, we can find out the magnetic field due to at any point which is outside that conductor. So that is a uh, uh, that uh, tool is helpful to find out the magnetic field uh, uh, at any arbitrary point. So uh, we all know that that equation is the uh, equation to find the magnetic field uh, in the bio sample law is uh, dv is equal to m naught by 4 pi ideal sine theta by r squared. So let me write the equation dv is equal to that is m naught by 4 pi ideal sine theta by r squared. So in this equation, to find out the magnetic field due to an element, we need to substitute the values for current, dl, and theta and r squared. All the things we have to measure and we have to substitute here, then only we can uh, obtain the value of d. We can determine the value, uh, determine the value of d. So uh, what I can say is, in order to find a dv, there is a lot of things to substitute here. You have to find out, you should know the value of theta, also you should know the value of the length of the element that is the dl, and also you should know what is the point of current that is going through the magnitude of current that is flowing through the, the conductor, also you should know the distance from the element to the point. So on substituting this, you will uh, you'll be able to find the magnitude. field. So uh, during that time, uh, uh, there was another scientist who was thinking that to find out the magnetic field in an easier way. So that was a possible, uh, that was uh, what uh, invented uh, by a scientist uh, called Ampere. We already heard of this name Ampere because uh, we already studied about uh, current electricity. In that chapter, uh, we said the unit of current. The unit of current is Ampere and uh, it was given by the uh, scientist whose name is uh, Andrew Ampere. So he uh, himself uh, give an equation uh, or to find out the magnetic field in easier way. So that we are going to discuss in this class. So here, uh, what we are going to discuss here is a that is an Andrew Ampere's law that is called as a Ampere's law. Ampere, Andrew Ampere is a very famous scientist and uh, he was very brilliant. Why? Because uh, he actually studied advanced mathematics at the age of 12. Today, what we are going to study at, at the age of 22, he has uh, studied at the age of 12. That is, he was very brilliant. He uh, completely studied the, the advanced mathematics. And uh, he was very fascinated uh, about the electricity magnetism. That is why he did a um, series of experiments uh, on the electricity magnetism and finally he found a relation between the uh, electricity and the magnetism. That is why he, he is uh, famous in the field of uh, electrodynamics and uh, in the field of electrodynamics and so uh, while, uh, while proving the relation between the electricity and the magnetism, he used the results that is obtained from the Oersted experiment. We already know about Oersted. Uh, uh, he was doing an experiment. Uh, there he found that the moving charge is uh, inducing the magnetic field. So he taking the, uh, the this ampere, took the results of uh, Oersted, and he proved the relations between uh, this electricity and magnetism. That is why he is very uh, famous. In the field of physics. So he has given one law. He has uh, given one equation to find out the magnetic field in a, in a simpler way. That is why when you come to the moving charges in magnetism, uh, there you, you can find the magnetic field due to any current carrying conductor with the help of two equations. The one equation is uh, by using the Biosarbut law, equation uh, from the Biosarbut law. Another one equation is from the Ampere's law. So let's see uh, what this Ampere's uh, law says. 
To explain the ambers like a lot, we have to take on the closed loop. Let me draw here. This is the loop I am considering our closed surface. We have to consider here. So that is the one condition to apply the ambers circuit or not. That is, we, we, have, we, we should have some closed surface or a closed area we should have. Yes. Let me take a closed surface here. Yes. So here, this is the surface, which is a closed here. And uh, let me say this as the surface. So here, this is the boundary. This is the boundary here. And let's say through this conductor, the current is flowing. Current is flowing through this conductor. That that is let's say I. I is the kind of the current that is flowing through that that flows the surface. So this is the surface. Okay. Now to explain the bios law, oh, sorry, to explain the Ampere's law, let us take the cross section of this thing. So here we have an underpart. We have taken its cross section. See, this is the boundary here. Let's slice this. Let's take a cross section of this so that. It will look like this. If you take the cross section, it will look like this. This is the cross section here. This is the quantity of current flowing here that is I. I is the quantity of, uh, quantity of uh, current flowing here. So this is the direction of uh, uh, traversing, path traversing. This is the direction of path travels. This is the direction of current. So that. Now, now what you want to find, it, find out is the magnetic field on any element. Let me take an element, very small piece of this material. That is called the element here. So where you want to find out the magnetic field? Let me say the length of this element is a D. Length of that element is here. Now I have to find out the magnetic field of this element. So this is calculated by Ambrose Law. He did a lot of experiments. Uh, he did a series of experiments on this, on this concept, and finally he uh, given one form to find out the magnetic field in the lines. He said that magnetic field due to this element uh, on the on the on the element DL. He is given by given by d dot dl which is equal to magnetic field times the length of the this element dl which is equal to v naught times i. So v naught means v naught under the naught that is the permeability of the free space. So it is a permeability of the free space, it is the permission given the, by the material to the flow of magnetic field through it, through that uh, uh, what material. That is called as permeability, I mean it is a, a current that is enclosed by the surface. So, what is the current enclosed within that surface is that is called the So, here you took a one cross section. You have to, uh, taken a cross section here. Yeah? In that, you have taken a one element that is a dl. So, this is a this equation gives a magnetic field only on dl. Then, what will be the magnetic field all around this, all around this conductor? Then, what will be the, what happens the length? Then, if you if you are going to find out the magnetic field all around this conductor, then the length would be equal to the, the circumference of this uh, uh, structure, of this structure. Yes. Then what we can say, uh, what we can apply here is, we can apply dl as a 2 pi r. So, from this equation what we can understand is, for a small element, we can write the ampere of as a b dot dl not x r. So, using this equation, you can find out any extent. For any kind of a length you can find it. So to find out to a, a large amount of length, 
uh, we use the mathematical uh, notations like the integration. That is why we will write as a closed integral. We will call this as a closed one. That is why we will put a circle in between. Closed in the integral of v dot dl, which is used as a not time span. Why I am writing the uh, integral is because by uh, you can substitute the value for dl here. Uh, by applying the limits, you can find the magnetic field for a whole uh, surface. That is why we are uh, we, uh, we put the integration sign here. So this is this is called as a I call it as a closed integral. That means the surface should be closed. If the surface is not closed, then you are not supposed to apply the ample circuit. Then you should go for by yourself. So this is the one limitation of this ample circuit. So integration of b dot d is equal to not times. This is the magnetic field on the element that is d l. And I this is a current enclosed within the uh, that uh, curve. Within this curve, there is a current I. So that is uh, I is called the current enclosed. So you should remember this. The that word enclosed is very important. That means the current should be current carrying conductor. The current should be should pass through within that uh, boundary. It should be very important. Otherwise, if the current is not flowing within the boundary. Then the magnetic field V will be zero. Why? Because I is not enclosed within that bond. Okay, that is a that is a thing we need to know while applying the upper circuit. And whatever the current is uh, drawn here, it is the steady current. Steady current means that current uh, the magnitude of current uh, do not change as the time lapses. There is no change in current as the time lapses. So uh, such currents are called the steady current. They are not going to vary. Yeah. So if there is a steady current, then you can apply the ample circuit law. If there is a non-steady current, then you are not supposed to apply the ample circuit law. That is a another limitation of uh, this ample circuit law. So this is the P W D L. We not have to. For example, if you wanted to find out magnetic field due to this whole boundary, or what will be total length due to this circumference. So what you can write? That is, you can write this is zero to two pi r. Let's say r is the length here. R is a sorry radius. So two pi r is your uh, limit. Means uh, minimum value is zero, maximum is two pi r. You can get here. So zero to two pi r, you can write v dot d l is equal to minus times r. Then you have to take the uh, v dot d l. It is a dot product. V d l cos theta. So v d l cos theta. You have to apply. Sorry, v d l. This becomes v d l cos theta. V cos theta. Integration of Zero to two pi r, closed integral of zero to two pi r, and here you will remain with the dl. If you integrate the dl, you will get the l, and after that we should apply upper limit that is the two pi r, lower limit is zero here. Upper limit minus lower limit that is why in the place of l we can substitute as two pi r, which gives the not and side. And the theta is a is an angle between the element L and B. That is uh, element L and B. The angle between them will be zero. Will be zero. Let's say uh, sorry. Let's say that uh, theta is equal to zero. Here yeah, cos zero means it is one. So cos zero means one. It is equal to one. So that B is equal to minus time sign. Take the two pi r to the other side, so that we get minus time divided by two pi r. See here. So this equation gives a magnetic field all along this angle. So that is the application of this bio circuit law. Yes. So no need to write this for your exam. This is enough.
sorry, the first institution is enough, that is closed integral of b dot dl is equal to naught times. I have given uh, this example the, the, that I am uh, talking up to understand, uh, to make you understand the concept. I mean, uh, if you have a substitute only dl, what have, or what, how to find the magnitude of the whole element, that picture I have given up. So this is about uh, Ampere's circuital law. And uh, I already told you that bio-forward law and, uh, and uh, Ampere's law, both are trying to find the magnitude. But while applying the Ampere law, there are some rest restrictions. I told you already, uh, there should be steady current, we should, we should pass through that uh, material. And uh, we should also take some closed loop. If you have not taken the closed loop, then we are not supposed to apply the Ampere circuit law. So, the, both the laws, bioforward and Ampere law, Ampere law, are trying to find the magnetic field. Yes. And to find out, uh, to apply the bio sorry, Ampere's law, sometimes we take some loops, we take some closed surfaces, imaginary surfaces sometimes we take. That surface is actually called as an Amperian loop. Loop means, you know that, that uh, starts from one point and uh, end at the, at the same point. Then you can call that as a loop. So, there are some loops where uh, it is the imaginary loop through which we are going to find the magnetic field using the ampere law. That is why such loops are called as the Amperian loops. Yeah. See so, yeah. here. Here we have taken uh, Amperian loop that coincides with this surface. That Amperian loop is on this surface, on this surface. Okay? So uh, that is what we should know. Uh, while, uh, while applying the Amperian circuit law, we have to take some loop. That loop will be called as an Amperian loop. It is an imaginary loop. And uh, it is used to find the magnetic field at any point outside that, uh, outside or on the surface, any way you can find it. And for example, yeah, let us study it later because uh, I have to discuss some concept related to uh, that concept. Yeah, let me complete, finish this one. So, Amber circuit of law, that is uh, first unit of beta D is equal to non times. So, let me write a definition for this. Definition uh, says that uh, uh, the closed integral of, or you can say line integral, the line integral of b dot dl, b dot dl is equal to E is equal to not times not times current enclosed current I enclosed by the surface. So this is the definition for definition for under circuit of law. So, equation of Ampere circuit is closed integral of b dot d is equal to not times. Ampere to find out the magnetic, uh, sorry, to find out the uh, magnetic field, we, are, we can take some loops, that loops are called the Ampere loops. Yeah. So, this is about uh, Ampere's law. 